Hello and welcome back to the Squirrel Head YouTube channel and today I'm going to be looking at a player that we have recently been linked with quite heavily in some news articles and media and everything like that and seems to be getting a little bit more of a push and we're looking at a goalkeeper and it's not really a goalkeeper that's been mentioned before this week maybe I think there's a couple of rumours coming out the week before that but we're looking at Thomas Strakosha now I, I hope I've said his name right, I really do Thomas Strakosha I, oh man, what a name. I, I really hope I haven't butchered it, but he is a 23-year-old goalkeeper. He has played for Lazio in Calcio A, uh, and uh, he is of Albanian descent. And he looks like he's actually done pretty well in the t in Calcio A, uh, or Serie A, uh, whichever one you want to call it. But we're going to look at his overall stats as well over the season for each of the competitions he was involved in, because I've got them up on my iPad right here. I actually prepared this time. I mean, give the video a like just for that straight away, because you guys know I don't I don't normally prepare very well. So let's have a look here. Before we get into the fact that he's 23 years old and stuff like that, let's have a look into his stats. We're going to kick off with Siri A straight away. And he played 38 times, got two yellow cards. He conceded 49 goals, and he kept 11 clean sheets. Straight away, that looks to me, I was, I, I'm thinking... 38 games and he only conceded 49 goals that's that's impressive that's impressive in my eyes 11 clean sheets also impressive for someone that's as young as him and you see the you know the strike forces that some teams have in Serie A Calcio A whichever that's that's actually pretty impressive um and that straight away it fills you with a little bit of confidence someone that's obviously you know he's a young lad um, 23 years old, playing in this team, played all the games by the looks of it as well, 38 games, to only con to only concede 49 and to keep 11 clean sheets is impressive. It does mean, obviously, I think he probably had a decent defence in front of him, but I'll be honest with you, I don't know because I don't really know Lazio's team, apart from Lucas, because he used to play for us. But there you go. Um, so that looks impressive straight away. Europa League, he played 10 times, uh, conceded 13 goals, kept three clean sheets. Again, not too bad, really. Uh, the Coppa Italia uh, played four times, con conceded one goal, is that, and three clean sheets? That's impressive, if so. That really is impressive, if so. Yeah, unless that one goal they conceded was in the final or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going by what's red, what's in front of me on, on here anyway. And the Super Coppa, or the Italian Super Cup, which they won, they played against Juventus, conceded two goals, but they actually scored three and they won that trophy. He won that trophy this season. So by that, he actually looks like a pretty impressive goalkeeper. Looks like someone who could be a good up-and-coming goalkeeper. Six foot four, he means he's got brilliant, obviously he's got brilliant length and everything like that. Uh, nothing dirty though, come on, let's keep it clean. Um, but it does, it looks impressive and it really, really does. A lot of people... I don't even think there's much of a divide. If you look at the likes of Twitter and stuff like that, and people are obviously thinking, you know, when we're linked with... Uh, we were linked with Buffon from somewhere. I don't know where, but we were. We were linked with Buffon. And then people are wanting us to get a much more experienced goalkeeper. Uh, people then, obviously, were looking at Alisson, who actually looks now like a dead cert to go to Real Madrid, but they're just finalising terms and agreements. Um then you're looking at the likes of people that were kicking off that Arsenal are going to be looks like they're going to be signing Bernd Leno from Leverkusen, who is another top-rated uh, German goalkeeper as well. And people are starting to look at why aren't we bringing in an experienced, proven goalkeeper and stuff like that, and why aren't we bringing in something that is a massive Oblak would be the other one as well from Atletico Madrid. You know, people are looking at like, why aren't we? Why aren't we just pay the release clauses, the eighty million, the ninety million, stuff like this? And it's either people are forgetting who our manager is, like, and the when the philosophy that he has. You look at the age of people that he's bringing in as well, bringing in Mane when he came into us. I think twenty four years old. Salah, I think he's only just now twenty five, maybe twenty six. I don't know. It was his birthday yesterday. I think. Um, I don't know if that meant he turned 26 or he's 25, can't remember. You look at Naby Keita, 23, Fabinho, 24. The players that he's bringing in are all around the similar sort of age. Why? 
probably because he's looking, he's got a vision, and the club have probably got a vision as well of the profile of type of players that they want, but also to be of a similar age because they maybe want to build success, build success in the team with a couple of experienced players in that team to help them. The experienced players that we'd be looking at right now, Milner, very experienced, and Henderson as captain is experienced as well. Not as experienced as Milner by no by no stretch of the imagination. But you get what I'm trying to come at here. Like even Andrew Robertson, I think he's 24, isn't he? Uh, Virgil Van Dijk, 26, similar sort of ages. Then you look at this one, Thomas Strakosha. If he comes out, if he comes along, 23 years old. Carius, 25 years old or 24 years old, whichever one it is. They're all around the similar sort of age bracket. And in an ideal world, you want to keep these players all together, get the same system of playing and maybe different tactics, different styles of play as well into the team, breed it together, keep them together for as long as possible, and you hope to build some success, win a couple of trophies here or there. Hell, even win a trophy would be nice. And that is why I think you're going to see maybe more... If this this could be the deal that actually happens, this could be something that actually goes through, depending on how um, how much Lazio really want to keep hold of the player. But if, if he has a release clause and we trigger it, which is apparently around... Now, it's either £53 million or €53 million. Euros. I'm inclined to believe that it's Euros. So again, and I must admit, all of this video is based off absolutely no footage. I have not gone and looked at his performances. I am literally... I, look, it got tweeted out by a lot of journalists. Some, like, res, you know, the respectable ones as well. Not just people that are like, you know, ITKs or in the nose as they're, as they're known as. Not just people like that. And then I went and looked at Transfermarkt.com, the German website that I always use. Not sponsored by them whatsoever, but they, they give you everything that you need. They give you even the minutes in total that they played. So in 38 games in Syria, he played 3,420 minutes. They don't have to do that, but it's just detailed. And you can get even more detail than that as well. Um, I'm just giving you the, on the basic, the compact data. data there. The compact data, that is what I was meant to say. So on the face of it, it looks like an impressive one. And I would be a fan of... Of trying to get this deal done, and I'm not. I, I'm not. Even, there's not even a but there. I know it sounded sounded like I was going to say but, but there isn't. There's no but there. I would be a fan of this coming through, because you get two young goalkeepers that have you know that one of them this Strakosha, he's won a trophy this season. All right, I think it was in August or something, but he still won one. Beat Juventus for it. You know he's had him. He's got some impressive clean sheet stats. Hasn't conceded many goals this season. That is impressive, and that is the type of things that we can bring in, and that we should be looking to bring in. That would be really, really good. It also provides then some healthy, stiff competition for carriers, who I think, on the face of it, when we come back into the season next year, I'm hoping that people's criticism and levels of anger towards carriers has actually died down. You know, we've seen... I will be doing some World Cup videos. I will be doing some World Cup videos because it looks like it's going to be a dramatic World Cup so far. But even... I made this point on Twitter last night and a few people agreed in that um, David De Gea for Spain made a mistake off a Cristiano Ronaldo shot. Wasn't the most powerful of shots of all time, but he spilled it. It looked like it, it looked like a cricket save or something like that. Anyway, it... it, it he gets the ball, but it bounces out of his hands and goes into the back of the net. One mistake does not define someone's career. It doesn't. And that is something that people have to get over with Carrius. Us bringing in another quality young goalkeeper doesn't change the fact that Carrius is a good goalkeeper. But we need competition. We need young, healthy competition as well. Something that Mignolet isn't. So even if we're looking at one of these guys as being like a backup to the other, whichever way, whoever's going to be the number one, I don't know. But even so, I think we need to bring in a young goalkeeper. And if it's this Thomas Strakosha, and I really hope I haven't butchered the name too much, but if it is, I'm happy for that. And if any of you out there know more detail about how he plays, what he looks like when he plays, I'm going to go and maybe try and watch some of his best, like his best game or something like that with Lazio. Um, and I'm just going to try and make some more opinions if this sort of deal happens 
would you be happy for this deal to happen? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, there's going to be more. As I said, there's going to be more of these videos as we get heavily linked to players, not just loose links. Um, and then, as I said, there is going to be some World Cup videos coming. Just I want to see what the lay of the land is after England play on Monday. Good God. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit that like button and subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you once again, and I will catch you later.